Suzanne Lyons here and welcome back. This is tip number five of pitching yourself and your projects. I love this one because it's all about getting out there and I love it when we take responsibility for getting out there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just so much more fun. It's so much more fun, isn't it, than sitting behind your computer typing or keeping going to, you know, I don't know, acting classes or directing classes. Get out. Get yourself out there and start pitching. Okay? And I promised you last time that I would have a very dear, dear friend who I've known for, well, I think the dinosaurs were walking the earth in my life. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. A long time. Let's just say a long time. Uh, Clay Storthus is here, and he is a wonderful actor. Uh, worked in all the different aspects, you know, from commercials to film to television, but now focusing, because uh, he lives in New York most of the year now, on theater. Mm -hmm. And really kind of making that his, his life right now, as well as an entrepreneur. He does have his own company, a very successful company at that, I might add. So, actually perfect guests to have for pitching. And what today's number five is about is how do we occur? It's not just about handing in that script. That's great. But guess what? I got to work with you, uh, you know, maybe for the next year. You know, so how do you occur as an actor? How do you occur as a makeup artist? As a in, in this industry, we're all working together. We're not just kind of in a little vacuum in our in our living room somewhere. Mm -hmm. We all, even as a writer, we have to all work together. So we have no idea how we occur. None of us have any idea how we occur. And yet it's one of the most important aspects, I think, to consider when pitching. So I'm going to hand it over to Clay, given he's as passionate about this part of the tips as I am. So Clay, what's your whole take on this whole thing called the occurring? Well, I started with you, working with you in, in seminars and, and, uh, and teaching and leading and coaching uh, 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. About. Flash Forward Institute. That's where we became such good friends and colleagues, by the way, was the Flash Forward Institute. And so I, um, one, there were two ways that I know about it. One time, the there was another partner that worked with us in uh, Flash Forward, and she called me, and I was younger then, and um, and I couldn't believe she called me, and she told me, she asked me what? if I could tell her how she came across or how oh, she occurred. Really? She really wanted to know. And at the time, I was, I think I might have been I was scared to say anything, and I was surprised that she would ask me, but I also, um, I told her a lot of good things, but then I, she told me to be really okay, and she wow. could, I could tell her anything, wow. and I told her bad things, too, or things that I thought were bad. But you probably, and knowing you, you probably did it in a very compassionate way. I probably way. did it in a really nice way, yes. and I probably, uh, but, but, but to me, at the time, I was like, I can't say this to anybody. I can't tell them these things. Right. And But one of the things I remember telling her was that when I talked to her on the phone or when I was with her, I never felt like we were friends or we were, you know, working together. I always felt like it was just business. Everything was business uh -huh. and um, and so then from then on and I'll tell you forever wow. and even if I called her today yeah she with me but I know she did it with everybody else like she took the advice and then she did it in the world and every single time we caught talk to each other she always says how are you doing really? what's going on and how how is your partner and how is how is your business going and I would ask her really? and it would always be short and concise and you. then we would go on to business and um, I even talked to her a few years ago, just a couple of years ago, and I said, do you remember doing this? And she did not even remember calling me and asking me. Wow. And it's significant to me because I thought, oh, my God, I told her all this evil, horrible stuff. Right. <laughs> but it wasn't evil. I mean, I was just saying yeah. what I thought about it. And then she just simply put it in from then on. And that was the shift of how she was occurring in the world. And then later on, about wow. a couple of years ago, I do a lot of plays, and that's a collaborative thing, like yeah. you were talking about. And you're yeah. working with other people all the time but it's every four weeks or six weeks or well it's longer than that because you run the play but um, if you end up with a whole new group of people like doing a film yeah, sure. and there you yeah. are and you have to work with them and one day this director uh, who's a very close friend of mine and had yeah. hired me a lot now um, he got mad as hell at me oh excuse me he got mad as he could get at That's me okay. I don't and he said <laughs> we're at all here <laughs> and he walked out of the room in the in the rehearsal, Whoa. and everyone, all of us, the whole cast, were just he just walked out on this thing, Whoa. and I thought, oh, he's just being a jerk, is what I thought. And then then I was in New York doing another play with a different director that I didn't even know, and she got real mad at me one day, huh. and almost walked out of the room. Got so mad because I was asking these questions. So I thought, you know, something's What's up. The common denominator. Like the common denominator yeah. would be me yeah. in this situation. I got it. And so I called a totally different people, not the people who'd gotten mad at me. <laughs> I called I called someone I felt very safe with 
that was a director I had worked with over and over and over again. And she, in fact, I worked with her 15, on 15 different plays over the past probably 25 years. And she um, was really honest with me. And she told me a lot of great things about me and what I did. Uh But she said, really interestingly, she said, Clay, you're a leader. You're kind of a born leader in the world. Really? And so when you walk into, um, when you walk into a room, sometimes you are the designated leader. Got it. But sometimes you're not. Oh, I And it. you're used to being the, des- the leader right. of the room. So right. oftentimes there'll be all these actors in a play and they're sure. mad at the director or something or they don't like something and they'll be all back kvetching and saying yeah. blah, 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 blah. Well, I always, before this, would always just take on, oh, well, you're right. Yeah. We should tell the director that. And I would go up and tell the director, oh this, 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 this. I hear you. And I would take on all these things that weren't even my own concerns. Oh, my God. But I would do it. And, 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 and go to the director so then that I got the brunt of everything the director was doing. Right. So from then on, there's been probably five, five or six plays that I've done since this time, and most of them in New York. Right. And from then I on, see. I just quit, you know, quit wow. making it a big deal. Oh my and, and, and my friend actually said, you need to shut up. <laughs> and you need to only do what's very important and you need right. to realize that you're not the leader unless you're the right. leader right. unless you're designated the leader Got so it. then I started putting it in right. that um, I would every once in a while on something very important to me I would say what I would and then yeah. I would stick back and Got wait it. and let other people take care of their concerns right. and let me take care of my concerns and I haven't Got had a fight it. with a director since and no one's walked out on me and I even worked for that director just the other day that did you it. really? He, yeah I mean I work with him again and he was ta- you know, we, we know how to dance the dance now a yeah. lot better and, uh, so I think okay so I, let me just underline a couple, oh my god that is so good um, let me just underline a couple things um, first of all let's get back to the first one that you, the first example that you talked about with the person who called you and asked how they were occurring. First of all, that was brilliant that they called mm-hmm. and did that. And that's going to be your homework, so pay attention to this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to hate me. Guess what? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that because like a fish in water, we don't know we're in water until it jumps out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So she didn't even know that it was missing, that it was missing, that it was missing. She didn't know that she didn't know that she didn't know. Mm-hmm. Clear? She okay. had tons of experience in the business. This sure. was no, like, yeah. this was someone who really knew what she was doing. Yeah. But she still didn't know that. Exactly. I get it. But but yet, she didn't know until she asked. Mm-hmm. She didn't know that it was missing, that who she was was somebody who went straight to business, who never created that little tiny bit, even 30 seconds of relationship. Mm-hmm. And yet, that means a lot to people to kind of do a bit of relationship before you jump in. Mm-hmm. So that was brilliant. The second thing that you talked about was that... One of your attributes, one of your great qualities in life is who you are as a leader. Mm-hmm. And I've known you for 20 years, and, and I get that. Mm-hmm. But yet you were, you were kind of doing that in, a, in an area where it was inappropriate to be that. Mm-hmm. And not knowing when to pull in the reins mm-hmm. is what I'm hearing. Because the director was the director. The director was me, the director. You know? Exactly. And so what you got, it, you know, when you said, hey, I'm going to look into this. I'm going to, like, inquire into what's not working here. Mm-hmm. As opposed to blaming everybody, which we mostly do, he looked at what isn't working. Mm-hmm. Guess what? And kind of like, how am I occurring that this is happening again and again and again, given I'm the common denominator. And then what I'm getting is that when you looked into it, they were saying, yeah, you don't get to play that game. You don't get to be the director when you're not the director. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you yeah. get to be the leader when it's appropriate. Mm-hmm. So that is such a, my God, these are true, perfect examples of occurring. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Great. And crystal clear. Crystal clear. Um, So I just really, oh my God, I love this. So you know what? Given that you've inspired me to give this homework, I had no intentions of giving this homework. (laughs) <laughs> so blame <Clay. laughs> the homework for let's see where we were around Tuesday okay so it's only for the next couple of days all right week three Tuesday so on Thursday but in the next 48 hours what I want you to do is I want you to call two people two friends or colleagues and ask them to be as gentle as possible but kind of that velvet hammer um how you're occurring Really, honestly, how do you occur for them? Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised at the great stuff and the not-so-great stuff. They'll come up, but at least you'll get to work on whatever that not-so-great stuff is. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, and if you want to call more people and see what the common denominator is for all of them, whatever they're saying, if it's all consistent, guess what? It's something you might want to look at. And if you're a person who's down on yourself or something like that, you know, get someone who's very safe with you and that you know knows you really well and you knows will be kind. You know will be kind because if you're kind of a down on yourself person, you might take anything and make it mean a whole bunch of bad stuff. Yeah, and it's not a bad. It's not bad stuff. No. It's just if it's about business. Yeah. It's about working with other people exactly. and it's about being more effective. Thank you. Yeah, it's not about making yourself wrong. It's not no. about looking for areas to make yourself wrong and then disappear. No, mm -hmm. it's about how can I be more effective? How can I, you know, be the best that I can possibly be mm -hmm. given I have to work with people? Yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you for underlining that. Now, I also want you guys to know that I have a treat for you next time. It's, you know, as if I haven't had enough with Clay here today. <laughs> <laughs> I've got another treat for tip number six. Laura Brennan is going to be coming in to join oh, she's us. She's wonderful. Oh, my God. I know you know her as well. In fact, she was a coach for Flash Forward, mm -hmm. I think, during the time you were teaching Flash Forward. She's a good friend. Oh, incredible. She was a head coach, I think, too. Um, and a good friend. And she's a writer, a brilliant writer. Works with my husband, too, actually, on some TV series. But also, what, what, what she's also, why I'm bringing her in, too, is she's also brilliant at pitching uh, because she is a pitching consultant mm -hmm. uh, for television. She, for she TV. Literally, for yeah. TV. She, you literally pay her to work on your pitch with you. And she's very, very good. In fact, some people even bring her into the networks with them to pitch. Mm -hmm. She's, she's that taught good. me a lot about it. It's wonderful. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, we I spent didn't... a lot of time together. Oh, I didn't know because that. Because I didn't know how to talk about television pitching. I know how to talk about auditioning oh, for certain things, but then she would work with me and, um, and ex explain a lot of things that were obvious in Got some it. ways, but I didn't understand from the other side of the oh, table. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, God. So you guys really have a treat. All right. Mm -hmm. So I will see you uh, next time on, what, I guess Thursday, um, for uh, pitching for tip number six. Uh, once again, Clay, thank you for joining You're me. Welcome. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. And I'm Suzanne Lyons. See you next time. Thank you.